Have you ever just walked by some food, you weren't thinking, you had no cravings, you had nothing in your mind, but then all of a sudden, bam, your mouth is full, you're three donuts in, three candies in, whatever, you're, you have this food in your mouth and you're like, where did that even come from? How is that even possible? So today we're gonna to be covering the thought aspect, the mental thought aspect, the intrusive thoughts about compulsive eating and how these, how to get rid of these intrusive thoughts, how to work with them. Because if I'm being honest, you, you don't get rid of them. You change your reactions to them, at least initially. Initially, you change your reactions to these intrusive thoughts and over time, you rewire your story, you reprogram your mind and the thoughts dim down over time, but they don't go away right away. So the key to understanding this whole compulsive eating thing where you're just, you get a thought in your head. Has that ever happened to you? Like, let's say if I say, I'm not trying to do this to be rude or anything, just I've worked with people. It was a Philly cheesesteak for one guy. Another girl, it was chocolate ice cream. There are foods that are like magnets <clears throat> where as soon as you think about it, you see an advertisement, you see an image, um, what have you. It's just, bam, it's in your brain. Urgh. And you can only resist for so long. Now, again, in this video, we're just covering the thought aspect of it. I'm gonna give the simple technique on how to deal with th these thoughts, and then we'll kind of build on that. Um, the simple technique is narration. Narration is where you use your eyes and verbally state out loud what you're seeing. And I'll say, I'll, I'll do an example, and then I'll give you an example of someone who has intrusive thoughts and how this narration technique can help people um, and help you uh, um, shift your relationship, shift your reaction to these intrusive thoughts. So me as a, pretend I'm a person who, who's just noting things. So I'm just looking at the camera and I'll say, I see trees, I see more trees, I see a phone in front of me, I see uh, a sky, I see um, a road, I see a car passing by. And you just do that, okay? It's very simple, but guess what'll happen when you are um, in the midst of a compulsive thought, okay? You're gonna go like, oh, this just, this just happened the other day. I was working with a woman and I, she was telling me her story and we hadn't touched upon this yet, so this is a perfect opportunity. She, I asked her, she was starting to tell me about her day and you know, uh, what she had eaten so far and, and so forth. And um, we're, we're at a good stage in our relationship. We've worked on hunger and we've done a bunch of other aspects in addition to that. Anyways, she, she says, she started overeating something and, and then I said, all right, just hold on, hold on right there. I want you just to pause and tell me what you're seeing. I taught her this narration technique, but I didn't tell her what would most likely happen. And this is what she did. She started going on. Uh, she started, tell me what you see around you. She, she was in her, uh, and, and like some, one of her rooms in her house. So I forget exactly what she said, but she was telling me like the walls, the stuff on the walls, the door. And then all of a sudden she broke out and she said something like, but I can't believe like I ate that, that food. Like, uh, I just like, ah, I'm so bad at this. Like, God, I suck at like eating. I cannot control myself. Like, I don't know what's up with me. And the way she was talking, the venom, like I'm not fully communicating that, but there was venom. There was self-hatred there. And it was exacerbating as she got on. And then I was able to just say, okay, go back to uh, noticing. And she was like, whoa, like what just happened there? And we talked about it. We said, you just had an automatic, automatic intrusive thought, an automatic negative thought. And instead of beating yourself up for having these thoughts, we need to expect these thoughts so that you can let them go and return to narration more quickly. So um, I asked her to practice this and when she practices, what she'll find out is that when she practices, she'll, she'll let's say she's having a compulsive thought. So she redirects her attention. I see the white wall, I see, I see whatever's in front of her. Use your eyes, you know? Um, the reason this technique works is because when you state what you see, y your brain can only focus on so much at a time. So this gives you something tangible and when you say it out loud, it really directs the attention from your brain to something 
and your brain is caught in these compulsive thoughts. So when you narrate it, it gets you out of that. And you're able to then get a little bit of space and see, wow, I got caught by that compulsive thought. So when you're by yourself, here's something that you can try. Um, go narrate. If you have a craving, or even if you find yourself all of a sudden eating food, pause for a moment and just do this narration technique. And what'll happen, this is what we need to change our expectations around. You need to expect that you are going to go into an automatic thought. You are going to, to say, why am I eating this food right now? Why, why do I want this food? Like, I can't believe it. Why don't I have discipline? Like, you're gonna berate yourself. You gotta expect that, okay? This is the short term. We're gonna cover the big picture in a little bit. This is what happens in the short term, okay? You're gonna have this thought, you need to expect it. A, that's enough. Like, if you just practice uh, noticing, oh wow, I just had a compulsive negative thought right there. Let me go back to um, my narration. Let me go back to noticing the, 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 the desk, the, the refrigerator, the, the whatever is surrounding. Let me go back to noticing my surroundings. Go back. And you'll, you'll be able to let go of that compulsive thought, that intrusive thought. And by, by going back, you're, you're, the fundamental paradigm changes. Instead of seeing these thoughts as, uh, as that you fail for having these thoughts or that you can't control yourself, it's more saying, I'm going to have these thoughts and I can do something about it. I can shift my attention. So this is how you begin to work with these thoughts is you just notice them. And I know you might've heard that in a meditation class where they say, oh, just notice your thoughts. And the problem and what comes up for a lot of people is that there's this subconscious belief that they should not be having these thoughts. They should not be having these thoughts. And, um, you know, so we have to be aware of that, that uh, belief that you should not be having these thoughts because remember, 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 what did I say earlier? You don't get rid of these thoughts in the beginning. You get rid of them in the long term. So in the beginning, you need to expect you're going to have these thoughts. You need to expect it. Okay. Like that is so important. If you're going to get rid of compulsive eating, you need to expect you're going to have these compulsive thoughts. The expectation is what this is all about. When you do the narration technique, you see, you'll just be narrating and bam, you're off in a negative loop and you didn't do anything about it. Like, it just happened, all right? Like, you just were living, you did not have an intention, it just happened. And you start to see and you start to bring acceptance and compassion towards the fact that as you are currently programmed, as you are currently wired, your childhood experiences and your karma, they've led you to this moment right now and your brain has this conditioning. And this conditioning is so powerful that it automatically triggers you to have this compulsive thought. It's, it's not your fault. You know, this is one of the biggest weight loss enlightenments. It's not your fault. You can reprogram your brain, but this is how it is right now. So let's not beat ourselves up for for the past, let's let go of the past, let's reprogram our brain going forward. So important, okay? And this is the first step to long-term success, all right? I wanna detail the long-term success. I'll take a moment just real quick. If you do like this video, go ahead, please, please, please leave a thumbs up, comment, engage. Um, would love to just know how this is resonating with you and what topics you wanna learn about more in the future. Um, now, the big picture is rewiring, quote unquote, your story. Um, this is a deeper sense of who you are. Um, the, the key paradigm is realizing that you write your story moment by moment. It's not like you have some story that's just in your body that automatically manifests. No, your story is something, it's actually a story that you've told yourself many, many times before. And so now you just almost automatically tell yourself this story um, whenever you get into situations revolving around food. Oftentimes, I'll just go into this real quick, oftentimes the story began in childhood. You felt some stressful emotion. Your parents weren't there to nurture you. You used food to protect you so you felt safe. You developed a story 
whether or not you are aware you develop this story, you develop a story around food that food protects me. If I'm in danger, I need to protect myself with food. And this story replays on and on and on today. So the key to reprogram your story is, first of all, understanding the content of those compulsive thoughts, of those automatic negative thoughts. Because the content of these negative thoughts is, is the key, is the, it, like the content of the negative thoughts is your story. So in the moment, these negative thoughts will come up. They're habitual, they're familiar, they're automatic. And understanding the content of these is how you rewire your story. So the content, it's gonna be specific to you as a person individually. Um, but for example, the content of a negative thought be, um, I can't handle this right now. Like, I don't have time for this. I don't know how to do this. I fail every time I try this. I, this doesn't work, okay? And this thought that comes up is gonna seem true. It's gonna seem true. But if you're able to bring, shine the light of consciousness, if you're able to shine the light of consciousness, all right, this is really, really important. If you're able to shine the light of consciousness into your thoughts, you will be able to see through the shadows and understand how your thoughts are illusions. I'll try to, I'll, I will get more tangible than that. We're just going big metaphors right now so you can understand the uh, big picture. Um, so let's say you're using the narration technique. You start to generate space and around the intrusive thoughts. So instead of blaming yourself, you're now accepting, wow, these thoughts are gonna come up. That's how my brain is programmed. And as you shift your stance and composure to these automatic negative thoughts, you then gain the mental headspace and clarity um, to then shine your awareness and actually examine these three things about the thought. This can help you reframe the thought and reframe your story. Um, you ask, would I be speaking like this to a loved one or, or a dog or, or someone I love? And number two, are there other scenarios? Are there other explanations for this negative thought? These are actual ways you can rewrite your story. So when you have a negative thought, the thought will often be a voice. You suck, you can't do this. And you have to think, you have to reframe, or you have to ask yourself rather, the first one was, uh, the first reframe was, um, would I be speaking like this to my dog or someone I love? And for me personally, because I do these techniques on myself, all right? I've gone through the ringer in terms of marijuana addiction. I've gone through the freaking ringer in terms of um, uh, shame and emotional growth. And this works, okay? Um, just the other day, uh, I was really struggling with like a weed craving and I felt it in my heart, I felt the, the, the pain, and this is kind of a separate topic, feeling it in your body, but the thought, the thought was, um, I need this right now. I need this right now. And so, I, I then tried to shift my perspective to seeing myself, I tried to speak love to myself, so I imagined myself as a high school kid when I didn't have as many emotional coping skills. And I imagined him saying, I need this right now, I need this right now, I need to, back in the high school I was binge eating when I was wrestling, I need this right now, there's that desperation, I need this right now. That's how I was kind of saying that, that voice in my head was desperate. And how I, I imagined my 16 year old self for saying that, and I said, what, what really do you need right now? And the answer was rest. I'd been working my ass off for like several days in a row and I had hit a wall and then um, I was able to rest out for about six hours, just going on a walk, take a break from work, took a nap. Um, and, and I was able to call a friend. I practiced self-care and the craving went away. Um, but the key was is that I was able to catch that negative thought, notice the tone, and then shift how I was speaking to myself. This is literally me rewriting my story um, and hopefully making it clear to you. Leave a comment below if you understand what I mean. The second one is understanding other plausible scenarios. 
So uh, this is a tough one for people. Well, you list three other scenarios. So let's say you have this automatic negative thought. You've done the hard work and you've caught the thought and now you're sitting with the thought. You wanna grab the food, but you know that you have to build up, you have to reframe your thought. You have to practice this. It takes practice, okay? So you're practicing rewriting your story. You've caught the thought, you're, you're, you're wrestling, you're in that moment where you want the food, you want the food, and you, you have tunnel vision for the food, but you, you're not going for it. The food is not in your mouth, or even if it is, you've, you've paused, there's a pause there. You're wrestling and you think, what is another scenario? What do I really need right here? How, why is this craving here? Another answer, you want a break from work. Um, you're actually hungry. Um, you want to avoid feeling bad. Um, there, you, why do I want this? I'm feeling rejected. You come up for another reason why you want the food. This over time broadens your perspective. They say that thoughts lead to feelings or just thoughts lead to action. Let's just simplify it. Thoughts lead to action, right? So when you have tunnel vision, you can only think of that food. You're going to only have one option available to you, which is to eat that food. Now, if you can pause in that uncomfortable space and try to reframe this story again, as you practice reframing, you'll get better at it. Um, but as you practice, it's uncomfortable. You're rewriting a new story. It's uncomfortable. Um, and, and, and if you ask, what are other plausible scenarios? Um, like, why is this compulsion here? What's behind it? If you do that and you come up with three answers, you'll then gain cognitive flexibility, which over time will lead you to realize, wow, either I don't want this food or I only want a little bit of this food. I don't even like the taste of this food. It'll give you mental space to see the food as it is. Because here's the thing, oftentimes people, they're so stressed out when they eat, compulsively eat that they don't pay attention to the food they're eating. And if they pay attention to it, if they get out of tunnel vision and pay attention to it, they might realize they only wanted one bite or they only wanted a little bit. But when they mindlessly eat, when you mindlessly eat, then you eat too much and it goes on and on and on and on. Um, so this is just one aspect we're talking about getting rid of the thought aspect of uh, compulsive eating. Um, I feel like this is about the end of where I'll stop explaining just to keep things, like I said, we talked about today. We, we talked about the narration aspect, just to recap this whole thing. Uh, we talked about the narration aspect. So you first got to be aware of your thoughts. That comes from narrating and expecting these negative thoughts. And then when you can catch these thoughts, you're aware. Oh, wow, I'm having a negative thought right, thought right now. Um, you then practice reframing by asking, how would I talk to myself? Is this negative thought unduly harsh? Is it too harsh to me? Would I speak this way to a friend? And maybe there's another explanation for this thought. You know, for example, if you thought, wow, I always fail with food. Well, is that always true? You know, like, maybe you have eaten healthy before. You don't always fail. So how is a better way to say, you, you know, how is a better word? How is a better phrase that you struggle with food? It's not that you always fail, you struggle. That's more realistic, it's cognitive flexibility. And this is hard. Sometimes I'll work with people in session and you know, it's, it, can be, it, it can be a struggle to uh, come up with that third option. So remember three plausible scenarios. Let's say you're thinking you're a failure. You say, oh man, I'm a failure. Okay, what's another plausible explanation? Well, you struggle, yeah. Um, maybe you have too high of standards, yeah. Maybe you just need a little bit of food to, to distract yourself or whatever. Coming up with that third option sometimes for people is really, really tough. And we need to realize this skill takes a lot of time to practice. This isn't like, you know, emotional eating is deep and it takes a while to rewire your brain. So like in session, someone's pretty calm. You know, we're, we're actually having a pretty good time. Like they're calm, they're, you know, my energy is with them and they're, they're feeling good energy. And even in this calm state, it's hard to think of a third option. So we need to bring compassion to ourselves in these stressful moments when the intrusive thought is there, when the craving is there, when that automatic tendency is there. It is hard to rewire your brain in these circumstances. It is hard. It's hard to do it in a calm session. It's even harder to do it in the moment. But you can do it. 
and you can practice, all right? You gotta lower your standards. I'm gonna go on a little rant and then we'll close up. But you gotta lower your standards. When you first begin this, you, you success is pausing and practicing. That's success, all right? Zen, in Zen, where I lived for 13 months as a Zen monk, or, and, I, and we learned that practice equals enlightenment. You don't wait for enlightenment someday. You practice now. And by practicing now, you manifest it later on. So practice equals enlightenment. When you practice rewiring your story, you're not gonna rewire your story overnight. But that is a success. Even if you then go eat the food, it is a success. Do not disconnect from your body when you eat that food. Stay connected to your senses. Eat the food mindfully. Don't go into automatic eating or automatic blaming. If you do go into automatic blaming or eating, remember that is an intrusive thought. You can still then shift back to narration and, um, and, and um, what's it called? Yeah, you can still shift back to narration. So um, that is it for today and hope this helps. All right, peace.